He laughs uproariously. Look at me. This is not who you are. This is not who you are! Who am I? You're not this! Why isn't my game as dramatic as this? Why is it always falling flat? Why can't I think of something cool to say like these trained actors and improvisers? Do I need to go to acting school just to play this fucking game? Well, I've actually been to acting school. I've spent countless hours in scene study, I've performed in plays, and I've done voiceover work professionally. And I'm here to tell you that none of that matters when you're playing an RPG. Now these shows like Critical Role and Dimension 20 are very entertaining. And to be honest, they've really given people a compelling glimpse as to what a truly immersive role-playing experience can look like. And wanting your game to reach the sorts of dramatic heights that you've seen on these shows is a good goal. I mean, why wouldn't you want that sort of experience? But here's the thing. The experience you have as an audience member of these shows is fundamentally different from an active participant at the game table. This misunderstanding and confusion of your role at the table is going to rob you of the very experience that you're trying to capture. Here's what you need to understand. Not only are you not an audience member when you play, there is no audience for you to perform for. And when you're trying to capture that feeling that you get when you watch these shows, whether you realize it or not, you're adopting the mindset that you need to put on a dramatic performance for other people to see in order to bring the game to life. This is why all of the bad YouTube advice out there is about how to bring your character to life with an accent or how to be a better voice actor. All of this is actually just putting the cart before the horse because it's missing what role-playing games actually have to offer as a medium. These games are not TV shows. They are not movies or books or radio plays. There's something unique and fundamentally different. Being an audience member puts you in the role of a passive consumer of a story being told to you. Being a role player at the table puts you in the shoes of a character in the world. There's no script or anyone telling you what comes next. You and you alone decide what happens because you are in the driver's seat and get to make decisions as your character. The reason it is so compelling to watch these shows is because you're actually watching the players fully commit to the imagined world and individually experience that world for themselves. So while you get to be entertained by the kind of result of this magic trick, you are completely missing the real magic that those players are experiencing at the table. When done right, these players aren't putting on a performance for anyone. They're living in the moment, and for them, the illusion of the game is becoming real. So what does this actually mean in practice? To answer this question, let's take a look at one of the most interesting movies ever made. A Streetcar Named Desire is one of the great American plays and movies from the 20th century. But what makes the film version so unique is that you have two fundamentally different approaches to acting on screen at the same time. Vivian Lee was one of the great early film actors, but she came from a classically trained stage acting background. Marlon Brando, on the other hand, was one of the first method actors to really break through and make it onto the silver screen. The result is this kind of bizarre combination of styles that really comes to life, but the differences in the two acting styles is extremely stark. Take this scene for example. How long are you here for? Well, I don't know yet. You gonna, you gonna shack up here? I thought I would if it's not inconvenient for you all. Mm. Traveling wears me out. Well, take it easy. <laughs> Not those cats. As the scenes play out, it's clear that Vivian is deliberately putting on a performance of a character to an audience, while Brando is simply living in the character while on screen. Lee comes across as extremely theatrical, one who is trying to create an illusion, emote, and provoke a reaction from the people watching her. Brando, on the other hand, is so loose and understated that danger simply radiates off of him. Brando is not trying to portray his character. He isn't putting on a voice to bring Stanley to life. He's treating the film set as if it were a real place and that Blanche was a real woman who had invaded his home. The reason Brando is so convincing is that he's experiencing what is known in the RPG space as character immersion. Immersion is not about creating an illusion for someone else to witness. It's about the illusion coming to life for you, and for a brief moment becoming real. 
Experiencing this sort of hyper-reality is almost indescribable. It's the reason so many people throw themselves into the world of acting when the career prospects are literally non-existent. Both the best actors and the best role players chase this dragon to the exclusion of everything else because once you've experienced it, there is no substitute. And the stark difference here is that Brando is not playing to an audience. Brando is submerged in the world. To him, in the moments he's on screen, there's no camera or film crew, there is no audience he is trying to entertain. He is simply pretending to be Stanley so deeply that for a brief moment, he has convinced himself that he is Stanley. This commitment and concentration in the moment is what allows him to be so spontaneous and convincing on screen. He isn't convincing because he's trying to trick you into thinking he is Stanley. He's convinced himself that he is the character. The performance you see is a result of Brando letting the world come to life only for himself. There is no illusion because you're watching something real. So what is the actual advice here? What, don't become a voice actor, but just become the greatest method actor of all time? No, the truth is actually a lot simpler than that. The best acting advice that you'll ever get is from friend of the show, Ian McKellen. How do I act so well? What I do is I pretend to be the person I'm portraying in the film or play. Yeah. You're confused. No. You already know how to become immersed in a character and in a world. Children know how to do this. You're simply playing make-believe. The difference in what you're doing now and what you were doing as a child is your own self-consciousness. When you were a kid, you didn't have any of the shame and your imagination was totally unbound. As an adult, you've got a much better handle on how the world works and what is actually possible in any given genre. What you need to do is combine the sincerity and enthusiasm that you had as a kid playing make-believe with the focus and attention of an adult. We're surrounded in the current culture by cynicism and commitment to irony, and you need to throw all of that away. You need to realize that what you're doing is not a performance for the benefit of others, but an exercise in imagination for yourself. When you can throw off all of the concerns you have about what your character sounds like, how you appear to other people at the table, and whether or not you will look or sound silly, you can make that world come to life in your imagination. And in that moment, where the illusion becomes real to you, that is the fundamental experience that the RPG has to offer. It will produce something that will appear authentic to other players at the table. But that after effect of the true magic is not what you're chasing. The moment is what you're chasing. And the result of that will become fuel for everyone else at the table. And that isn't to say that there is no overlap between acting and role-playing. There clearly is. But the activity of role-playing is different in both its character and its structure to acting in a movie or a play. Brando may have been living authentically in the moment while he was playing Stanley Kowalski, but he had something you'll never have at your table. He had a script and a predefined artistic vision, and months of rehearsal before the cameras started rolling. All of this is done to create a specific story to be told to an audience. In a role-playing game, there is no script, but there is a structure to the game. Every role-playing game from D&D to Vampire the Masquerade has a mechanical backbone to it. These rules exist to service and simulate a particular genre and to create a believable world for your character to take action in. Knowing the rules of your game inside and out is imperative to creating an immersive experience. This is not optional. Like an actor who knows their lines by rote, you need to know the game system you are playing like the back of your hand. Knowing the rules and limitations of the world that your character exists in tells you what your character is capable of in the moment. It allows you to make decisions spontaneously as that character. The spontaneity is the precondition to an immersive experience, and you should know the rules so well that they fade into the background and operate intuitively. This way, your character can take on a life of its own beyond simply being a chess piece on the board. If you know the rules, you will know what your character would do. And this is a big mistake that people make when they choose games that are marketed as rules light. There is a misconception that mechanics and role play are in opposition to each other. This is a false dichotomy and something you also need to purge from your mind. The truth is that just like actors need to put in effort to internalize the script, you need to internalize the rules of your game for it to produce the intended experience. So you don't need to go to Juilliard or DeVry. You already have what you need to get the most out of your game and to have epic and dramatic experiences. All you need to do is let go. Stop trying to put on a show for everyone else at the table and lean into your character, 
your imagination, and know the game system like you know your own reflection. Since you aren't putting on a performance for anyone, you can be greedy about these moments of immersion. Because greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed will save your game. Chase that dragon of character immersion for yourself and it will spill over into every other aspect of your game at the table. When everyone does this together, the game sings and you'll have moments and memories that'll make Critical Role look like a candle next to the sun. This is what makes RPGs unlike any other medium. It's something that you experience. And once you cast aside the distractions of performing and putting on a show for other people, you'll be free to actually roleplay. This will transport you to places you couldn't have imagined previously, and there will be no going back. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. We've got a whole lot more content like this on the way, and you won't want to miss it. If you hated this video, on the other hand, please, for the love of God, tell us in the comments. We are invulnerable to any criticism you have, but we would love to see you try. I imagined what it would be like to be a wizard, and then I pretended and acted in that way on the day. Yeah. 